Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Got a request from a YouTube watcher, and she pointed out, and she's right, that because I am here in the heart of the country in Kansas City, that I mainly talk about birds that are common throughout the central and lower United States uh, most of the time. And I'm not talking that much about, and I try to, you know, include northern birds, western birds, southwestern birds at times, but I, she wanted a program on just her northern birds because she lives to, well to our north, and they do get different birds in winter. Now, they do still have many of the same birds visiting them that we do, and so, uh, you know, white-breasted nuthatches, black-capped chickadees, uh, you know, red-bellied woodpecker, hairy woodpecker, a lot of those are the same up there. But she wanted me to talk about other birds, but birds that are not uh, often talked about, but they get to see up there. So I thought it was a good idea. And I want to try to do a series of these to try to address different parts of the country because the YouTube channel is gaining popularity around the country. So today's topic, northern birds. So first one I have up is uh, two birds. Uh, one, one thing I'd point out is that I'm limited to 10 slides in this, this program I'm in, so I had to combine some birds into slides here. But yes, red-breasted nuthatches uh, are, make it into the lower 48s and sometimes into the deep south in winter months, depending upon uh, the, the food crop availability and things like that. But they are very common at feeders in the northern tier states and in the, the Canadian provinces. And uh, they are cuter, tinier, smaller than the white-breasted nuthatch, but they are and very bold. And they, they love peanuts, and they love sunflower hearts, things like that. And so they're easily attracted. And you probably see a lot of those, that white stripe through the eye and a chickadee that you know you have black cap chickadees up there and some of you in, in uh some of your range have mountain chickadees but one of the unique chickadees up there is the boreal chickadee and it has a brown cap instead of a black cap it looks a lot like a, a black cap chickadee except for the brown and the little, uh, the little roosty on the sides too but they should come to your feeders uh, there are very few documented uh, records of this bird uh, well, down into the lower 48s, just the northern tier states. I remember uh, when I was living in Pittsburgh, uh, they were telling me of a boreal chickadee that showed up at a bird feeder there many years ago, caused quite a stir because th these birds don't migrate. I mean, they're, they don't wander very far typically, but that must have been an adventurous individual who moved his way down there. But the boreal chickadees are so cute. And we this picture was taken up in uh north of Duluth, Minnesota. So remember, I'm talking about the north. I am talking about those northern tier states too. Over into the northeast, all across, way over to Washington, those northern, especially where there is boreal forest, uh, a lot of these species uh, are, are residents there and move around in winter a little bit. But uh, you live up in that region, you should get representation from them. And a couple of the, the finches, they are really finches that are uh, uh, notable up there. And in some years, there's a lot. Some years, there's there's not. Uh, the pine grosbeak on the left, is uh, this is a male who's red, and the female is just like him, but yellow. Uh, and they I've seen huge flocks of those up there in Duluth when I've been bird watching in the winter. But I know some years are not even there. I mean, it, 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 they stay way up to the northern provinces, but they do wander down into those like Minnesota, the Dakotas, things like that across the northern tier states. And the evening grosbeak on the right, the yellow one, uh, this is a, a male, two males and a female in a bird feeder. Um, and we used to get these a fairly, uh, fairly regularly in the lower 48s down here in the Carolinas. My life bird was in North Carolina and we used to have them at feeders. Boy, that has just ceased in the last 30, 40 years. We hardly get any down here uh, anymore, but they're still a northern bird and you guys get to enjoy them up there. Boy, they love sunflower. Yeah, striped sunflower. When the when the gross weeks move in, go get some more seed because they are pigs, as a friend of mine used to call them, and they really go through a lot of bird seed. And you sometimes you'll see huge flocks of these, and sometimes a lot of times you'll see them in at least small flocks. But sometimes you can get a lot bigger flocks. And I bet you up in your uh, that's probably one of the more popular feeder birds up in the north, uh, where you know, they they do come still come down that far. And again, like a lot of finches, it just depends on their natural food sources. So if their food source natural food sources are lacking, then they'll come a little farther south and, and hit your feeder. So beautiful, beautiful birds. I wish we still got them down here, but then look, if we don't, it's a rare sight anymore. And the finch 
that the small finch is so is unique up there, and the most common lot in a lot of winters are the uh, common red poles. They just call them red poles now, without the common, uh, and they uh, love finch feeders and. We get them down here every so often, but up you guys are lucky to get them uh, probably every winter up there. You keep a supply of uh, Niger and sunflower chips out for them. They they will definitely come to that. They're a very hardy species. Uh, things like pine grouse, to be, uh, it, it, well, they're very similar in diet, but these guys... Uh, they can, they can be in big flocks. They can be in small flocks. When we see them this far south, usually there's a couple of them in, 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 at a feeder or usually just one. But you guys up there, you keep your finch feeders stocked and you should get these uh, these um, red poles fairly regularly. And they'll be mixed in a lot of times with the goldfinches and with the pine siskins uh, that uh, you may have a lot of or may not. But they those are more common birds we've talked to, we talk about on a regular basis. So uh, remember, this program is about those we don't get to see very often. But all right, and the other two finches that uh, come in in certain years in good numbers and other years not are the crossbills. On the right hand side of the screen are the the male and female, male red, female yellow, uh, red crossbills, and they you can see if you can see the tip of their bill, you can see they're crossed like that for prying uh, seeds out of pine cones. And on the left is the white winged crossbill, and they are. are are a little less numerous than the than the red cross bills, but wherever you are, it depends on what part of the north you live in, you may get them. I mean, they they come in and, and when they settle into a feeder, you might have them all winter. You know, they tend to seek out a food source, and they tend to be more numerous whenever they're pine seeds. Because a lot of these the gross, I mean, these cross bills are adapted to certain kinds of pine cones. And when those pine seeds fail, they really move into feeders and come down your way. So you may see them in some years and some years not. Um, and then the J group. Uh, we, it, you probably have blue jays, and it, 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 like a lot of us. Uh, but up in the northern interior, you get two unique jays that we don't ever see here. The Canada or gray jay on the left. Uh, and a lot of people call them camp robbers. And the Stellar's jay, which is a, a more vibrant colored uh, a re relative of the blue jay with the crest and everything to look somewhat the same, but they are bold little birds, uh, and and you know they're opportunistic. They eat a lot of different kinds of foods, and, and uh, they will settle in onto a bird feeder station and visit it regularly whenever conditions are harsh. They may not come as much whenever the, there are mild conditions, but the gray jay and the Canada jay, you two that are those northern tier birds, and then move, you know, maybe not on your feeder, but under your feeders and in open spaces around you are the snow buntings. And these are beautiful little birds and they vary, you know, early in the winter, they're going to be have brownish in the face and the head. Uh, and in, in the spring, if you see them right before they migrate north to nest, the, they'll be jet black on their back and in their wings and pure white on their gorgeous bird. But in the winter, you see them in various, um, plumages somewhere between those two. And you, again, you usually see them in flocks. They tend to be in farm fields and picking up grain that has fallen down or uh, uh, on gravel roads that have been plowed where they're picking up the grit and these seeds that might be there. But people have had them under their bird feeders. So I thought I would put them in there uh, for you to be on the lookout for beautiful little birds. And then one a bird that's quite a bit larger than that that does visit the, especially big platform feeders if you have a big open platform with seeds different seeds spread out on it this is a roughed grouse and they they're <laughs> they're pretty comical i love watching grouse these these guys uh you know they're ground birds ground nesting birds but they do get up in trees like when this, there's snow cover on the ground i've seen 12 15 of them up in a tree before up in duluth where they're uh, you know getting away from that snow getting their feet out of it and they'll get up on uh, on those bird feeders and they'll peck at corn and any other grains that you may have up there they'll they'll eat just about anything you know they uh, if it's available for them so Having to, you might see this larger bird, like a small chicken up on your feeder, and it may probably is a rough grouse up in that part of the world. Now, with just landscaping, you have a chance to attract the bohemian waxwing. Now, most people are familiar with the cedar waxwing, but the bohemian waxwing is a more northern uh, bird and doesn't come real far south. Uh, it, it, but in northern tier states, yes, in some winters, and, and uh, they are larger than the cedar waxwing. They have rufous red under their tail. Uh, their crest is taller. They're they're an impressive bird. I, I've seen them, and, and uh, they're pretty. I mean, 
Uh, cedar wax wings are beautiful. The Bohemian wax wings are extra special because we just don't get to see them very often. So if you've got berry bushes you planted in your yard, you have a really good chance of seeing uh, Bohemian wax wings in some years. And then other birds, uh, uh, the common raven. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> a, 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 I've heard it described that crows are large black birds with a black bill. And, I, it, and a raven is a large black bill with a bird attached. They do have a really stout bill, and they go, oh, 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 rather than caw, 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 that the crows do. Uh, and they'll, they're will they very, very smart, super intelligent birds, and they may come into your feeders and uh, when times are really harsh and, and take advantage of free food. And then the two um, predators, I, I guess, is the way um, – that may be different for, for than us. So it's, we rarely get the snowy owl. Uh, every five or six years, we'll have a few sightings down here, but you should get them up in those northern areas pretty much every winter in some places. Uh, and then on the left is the northern goshawk, now changed their name to American goshawk. Um, this is a young bird, but that bold white stripe through the eye, and they're sizable predators. These are related to the Cooper's hawks and the shark shin hawks, but the northern goshawks, really do specialize in things like grouse. Uh, they do, they, they take them as a big enough reward and that's how big they are. They're, they're a big predator uh, that can take a bird that size. But this bird will come in and uh, chase birds at your bird feeders, especially young birds like this with the brown striping and the adults have, you know, bold uh, gray, dark gray backs and, and dark gray head with uh, fine gray streaks on their breast. Beautiful birds, but they are ferocious and they will hunt your bird feeders. So I thought that, you know, when it comes to uh, the northern tier bird, northern birds, I picked out some that I thought that you have a good chance to see or you probably do see regularly. And I hope this helped because, uh, like I said, I don't mean to ignore you guys up there. It is just our nature to, for my nature just to be in this area to talk about it, the birds in just this area. But you're right. The channel's growing. I want to get to some specialized birds for these different regions. So that's the first one, birds of the north. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would, give us a like, give us a share. Uh, if you're on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Until then, let's talk birds.